currently a TA for a freshman course. If you are a RA or TA, then your tuition gets waived completely. So that's not something to worry about. And if in case you don't get one, then there's also plenty of on-campus options. You are working as an RA, right? So what is your salary? So you told you are doing computer architecture uh, related, right? So how are the coursework over here? Are they? Hey friends, today a special guest joined with us, Sophia. Thanks for joining us, Sophia. And uh, she is doing her master's in UT Austin. And I thought it will be a good information for all of you to know how to apply in, apply for master's in UT Austin, or how to secure a TA and RA in UT Austin, and also about the living expense and uh, what are the apartments nearby, and also about uh, her field like EC. How is the internship opportunities for her, and all those things we are going to cover. Uh, let's welcome Sophia and uh, we'll ask or we'll ask about her like experience in UT Austin and all her experiences. Um, that will be the all. Without making further delay, let's jump into the video. Hi Sophia, thank you for joining us. And uh, the first question will be about like yourself. Basically, you can introduce uh, yourself to the audience. Sure. So hi, I'm Sophia Chang. I'm a student here at UT Austin working on my master's in ECE and specializing in computer architecture. Yeah, cool. And uh, may I know like, uh, what is the course duration in UT Austin and uh, how typically people, because for thesis and non-thesis, the time differs. So how is it over here? Yeah, so for the, usually master's program would take two years. And if you spend a lot of uh, time with classes in each semester, then you can take it in 1.5. But if you do a thesis, sometimes it takes 2.5. Okay, cool. And uh, like coming about around this topic, so is there any RA and TA jobs available over here? Or in case if you don't get a RA and TA, because it will be maybe uh, like competitive or something like that sometimes. So in case if you don't get a RA, will you be getting any part-time job outside of the campus? Yeah. So. I'm currently a TA for a freshman course, and it's uh, there's usually a lot of positions available. So for TA and RA, usually you can just ask your professor. They'll uh, typically be a professor that you uh, took a class with before, so they know you and they know you did well in it, and then they know you're qualified. And then if in case you don't get one, then there's also plenty of on-campus opportunities that you can do part-time with. So you could work in the library, work in the uh, union, restaurants, or uh, Starbucks. I know a lot of people who are doing uh, barista work and they enjoy a lot. And also the makerspace. We have a makerspace in the engineering building. Okay, cool. Uh, cool to know. And uh, coming around this, so uh, what is the tuition fee in University of Texas at Austin? And uh, is it manageable or what is the tuition fee structure look like? Yeah. So for tuition, um, as graduate students for in-state, we pay $5,300 per semester. And then for out-of-state, we'll pay $10,500 per semester. So it's quite a bit of a difference. Um, but if you are a RA or TA, then your tuition gets waived completely. So that's not something to worry about. Okay. And then since you don't have to pay tuition, the only other thing you have to be concerned about is housing. Yeah. And Housing is a little more expensive in Austin than other Texas cities. So if you live in West Campus and you have roommates, then you'll probably pay somewhere between uh, 700 to uh, $900. If you don't have a roommate, then you'll pay, it'll be more, probably somewhere between 1,000 or 1,100 to 1,600 dollars, depending if you live in West Campus or in North Campus. Okay, so coming around this point, so you are working as an RA, right? So what is your salary? Were you able to manage with the salary what you are getting, your housing, your food, and your living expenses? Yeah. So for uh, me as an RA or as a TA, RA and TA get paid around the same. And uh, it's around 2,400 per month. So okay. this is working 20 hours per week and you get all your tuition waived. So you don't pay any money for tuition. And then for groceries, it'll be around um, $300 per month if you cook a ton, mm -hmm. a ton or if you go to restaurants, it's like $15 a meal usually. So it's definitely very manageable. You, you can uh, live off of your uh, stipend pretty easily. Cool. And. Uh... So after this tuition and the housing things, let me move to the topic which many people are interested in knowing is internship opportunities. So thus in my university back in University of Florida, usually we'll get career fair where people will come, will give our resumes, 
maybe after seeing i resume some might get shortlisted for a internship uh, calls or something because while applying even if you apply many job opportunities we getting call is so tough sometimes yeah. so how does here in ut austin the students are facing like are they getting internship is a career fair over here or how it is yeah so for undergrad students it's really, it's harder but for grad students pretty much everyone gets an internship over oh, yeah. the summer so it's really easy we do have career fairs and uh, there's one in the fall a big one oh. and it has around 50 to 70 companies come every year and then in the spring we have another one so there's plenty of opportunities and in the career fairs they'll sometimes shortlist you like you said and uh, give you an interview within the week oh okay pretty cool to know and uh, what about the full time opportunities over here like uh, is it the same same anyway it's going to be the same like internship right or yeah. uh, like what is the conversion rate as you know uh, like people who do internship and then they might have get converted into full time right like how is your university students are getting converted are they getting converted more or how it looks like yeah so uh, in internships in general the the companies i've been to it looks like around the 50 to 80 percent uh, intern conversion rate so okay. around that much will get a return offer so many people do get return offers and go back to their company where they work because they liked it a lot oh, okay and um yeah that will be great to know and uh, uh, i have after all these questions i have like going back to the first two questions like about your coursework so you told you are doing computer architecture uh, related right so how are the coursework over here are they good and uh, is a professor approachable for master's degree or uh, are they usually busy so could you brief about it a little bit sure so the computer architecture courses at ut are actually one of the best there's a ton mm -hmm. of our courses there's microarchitecture which is a really great course uh, and a lot of companies will even look for it on your resume uh, when they interview and then there's also a lot of other like verification and digital design courses and also um, more on uh, parallel computer architect like architecture and mm -hmm. stuff so many courses and then the professors are usually very extremely smart and also very nice so okay. uh, they're pretty approachable especially for grad students and um, you can even go to them for life advice very quickly. <laughs> nice to know. And uh, coming in the same track, so how is the assignments and project works, whatever they give? Was it uh, you went to internship, right? Yeah. So is it useful when you went to internship, the coursework which you took here, or is it completely different from yeah. what you're studying? It's definitely very useful. Like okay. the degree came in handy for sure. All the classwork, it gives you a background of like really good background fundamentals about the internship work that you're doing. And even okay. if the language is not the exact same that you learned in school, you can pick it up pretty fast. Okay, cool. And uh, uh, asking about the project, so was the deadline is too strict or do you have a sufficient time to do that because i know many students tell that so when you study in a very top university right like ut is one of the top university where many people want to come and land so when you come into a very good university the course structure and the like amount of assignments and the projects which you need to do is going to be hectic yeah so how is how can you manage it because you are being an ra and also doing the coursework every semester how is it manageable or not yeah I think it's pretty manageable, but as graduate students, you would notice that you have to be able to structure and manage your time very well. So mm -hmm. you have to, uh, when you work, it's usually part time is 20 hours per week, and then you have around nine hours of coursework. So three classes. Okay. Okay. So it's like every coursework will be having three classes per week, right? Um, though it's, if you have three classes, you'll probably be two lectures per week okay. and then, uh, yeah, throughout the semester. But the, yeah, for the projects, I think, uh, the deadlines are pretty lenient. Even if you submit a little bit late, the professors are very nice, oh, okay. uh, but in general, you, uh, do have shorter timelines, uh, because, and with a lot of classes, you have to, um, be able to kind of context switch between all of your projects and make sure they all get done on time mm -hmm. without procrastinating mm -hmm. it yeah understandable and uh, uh, these are the questions i have in general for today's video and uh, if you want to know anything more please comment down uh, we can talk to sophia and get the information whenever you want and uh, after this i leave it to you uh, if you want to give some tips and tricks which students should know before coming to ut austin you can share maybe you might have felt like if i had known this before it would have been useful mm -hmm. for me or something like that yeah so you yeah. can brief about it sure um so i think uh, as a student mindset uh whenever you first start classes and stuff maybe you don't see the usefulness of all your classes right because uh you never had to apply it but then when you go into your first internship you can see oh this 
is actually useful and you can um, like every little thing that you learn in your classes even if it's a little bit adjacent to your major or to your work and job it will still come in handy in some way or form so um, it's good to kind of treasure all of the things that you're learning in class and uh, take it seriously and uh, work hard to learn it cool and uh, one last question about it do you if you feel like giving some tips and tricks for application you can say about it uh, if you want to specify something like uh, why I'm asking this question is many people why writing SOP yeah. or drafting SOP it should be like uh, more personal or how did you write your SOP yeah. uh, that will be helpful so is it like more personal you wrote or more like you wanted to study under some professor or how did you address that yeah uh, for me I wrote it kind of uh, personal to what I thought so like for me I uh, if your SOP aligns with the university's goals, for mm -hmm. example, UT has a huge focus on research. Oh, okay. It's good to like say that. It's like check the university's culture and like values and stuff, and then try to align your statement of purpose to that. So UT is a heavily like research university, and um, it's also good to include ways that you can uh, help the university become better as well. So like if you like to teach others, mention that, or if you like to do research, also. Say, say that in your SOP as well. So as long as you show passion and initiative and maybe ways which you can improve the program here, then that would be something helpful to put. Yeah, thank you. And uh, one last thing, uh, will you mind adding your LinkedIn ID below in my video? Yeah, like, sure. Yeah, so you can say your LinkedIn ID to the folks if you want, just uh, by telling your LinkedIn name, whatever it is. And I'll, I'll also add in the below in the description, which you can take a look at a LinkedIn ID. In case if you have any doubt uh, after coming to UT Austin or while, uh, maybe you might be a prospective student who will be coming in the next fall. Uh, in case if you have any doubt, you can ping Sophia. She is very helpful. Definitely, in case if she have a time, she will answer your queries too. Yeah. yeah, that will be yeah. all, Sophia. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, joining us in today's video. Yeah. Uh, no I hope it will be really helpful for all of those. Yeah, hope it helps. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that cool. will be all.